Hi, everybody. My name is Alexander Gamero Garrido. I'm a future faculty fellow in computer science at Northeastern. The vast majority of this work was completed at CADA, UC San Diego during my PhD, along with Esteban, Shuai, Bradley, and my co-advisors, Alex and Alberto. How do we go about quantifying the exposure of an entire country to traffic observation and selective tampering? We start with the insight that country level networks are often hierarchical. If you're an internet user in any given country, let's say Ethiopia for the sake of an example, you typically access the internet by contracting service from either a residential provider or a mobile provider. These are of course autonomous systems or network operators that are responsible for delivering traffic within their network. Besides these access providers, there's a second category of network that also is responsible for delivering traffic to these consumers. And these are transit providers who are responsible for delivering traffic both within their network as well as to customer networks that are connected to them. If you are a user, from your perspective, your traffic is always exposed to the access network and to the transit provider. But that's not what we're interested in discussing with this presentation and in our study. We're interested in finding cases where entire countries are exposed to observation or tampering of their internet traffic by virtue of their network uh, topology at the microscopic level. So from this diagram, it is clear that two networks, the transit provider that serves the access networks in Ethiopia, as well as its transit provider in Djibouti, a neighbor of Ethiopia that does have access to the sea, may have capabilities to, for instance, monitor unencrypted traffic and metadata, or even selectively tamper with popular application flows. And so these are pretty serious potential harms. And we go about identifying countries that are in these unenviable positions by first identifying countries that are dominated by the traditional hierarchy of transit providers. And formally, we identify transit dominant countries. So these are countries where as best as we can tell from public data sets, from our own active campaign, uh, large scale, and from operator validation, uh, the dominant inbound modality for internet traffic is through known transit links. This is of course in opposition to the main modality of inbound transit being uh, peering relationships. And formally we label transit dominant countries as those where the blue routes, known transit links are prevalent. Using this methodology, we identify 75 transit dominant countries. In aggregate, these countries have just over a quarter of the uh, internet users in the world. They are a combination of large and small countries, predominantly in the global south. So now that we know that there's a group of countries where transit providers are relevant because they have capabilities to observe or excuse me, potentially tamper with traffic towards the entire country, how do we go about modeling that exposure in quantitative terms? So let's think of these two fictional topologies, the one in Ethiopia I've already discussed, that's here on the, on the right. And then on the left, we have Turkey, uh, which is another country where instead of having one centralized network, you have three, each delivering traffic to one origin AS. And intuitively, Ethiopia is more exposed to a single network than Turkey at the country level because Turkey has more diversity of transit providers in its service. In order to quantify this, we pick the denominator of IP addresses. And so this is a necessary resource, of course, to connect the dev a device to the internet and uh, more specifically, we aggregate all the DGP prefixes that are located in any given country 
uh, in order to determine what are the relevant IP blocks uh, that we need to study. And then um, from this diagram, we can see that there is a connection between the structure of the topology and how exposed the country is to any individual network. Because the transfer provider on the right may carry traffic towards every IP in Ethiopia, whereas any of the transfer providers on the left may only carry traffic towards one out of three IPs in Turkey. This is the quantitative core of our model of country level exposure. Um, it's, it's really the fraction of the country's IPs that are served by, a, by any given transit network. And our country level transit influence metric is proportional to the fraction of IPs that any given transit network serves uh, divided by the number of IPs in the country. More formally, our metric quantifies the exposure of a country's inbound traffic to both observation and tampering by specific transit networks. How do we interpret this metric, the output of our analysis? Let's think of the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. So the best case scenario is we have a lot of transit providers. Uh, think of a, an even better situation than Turkey in the previous slide, where um, each are, is, is serving a few IPs. And so the country is not exposed for, in particular to any of them. And then the worst case scenario would be a curve that looks more like the blue here, um, where the top transit provider really monopolizes connectivity um, and therefore has a CTI of 1.0. And then every other transit network in the country is much more marginal than that top transit provider. It turns out that we empirically observed uh, several countries that were close to this worst case scenario. And so here we have Cuba and Sierra Leone, where the top transit provider has a CTI in the case of Cuba of nearly 1.0. And in the case of Sierra Leone is uh, slightly lower at, at 0.8. The top transit provider in both cases by CTI is both a state-owned company and a submarine cable operator. Uh, these are companies that we frequently observed empirically. And there's, there's much more information about this uh, in the paper. And I'm happy to discuss it uh, uh, offline as well. So what did we find when we looked at CTI across all 75 countries rather than any individual country? And so we find that if you look at this box plot here, many countries are significantly exposed. So as a reminder, the edges of the box in this box plot are um, the 25th and the 75th percentile of the CTI of each top ranked AS. And the median is marked by the, uh, uh, the horizontal line. And the median is quite high uh, at 0.35, the CTI of the top ranked AS in this group of countries means that um, these countries are, are quite exposed to the top network uh, uh, delivering traffic to them. Then we also notice um, that there is a sharp decline in CTI across rank. Um, and so this tells us that the top provider is usually dominant in, in all of these countries and then on aggregate. Um, and then the other providers in the country, those that are ranked second, third, fourth, and so on are much more marginal. And so in, in summary, countries are much closer to the situation uh, of, uh, of Ethiopia uh, or even the fictionalized topology of Turkey, uh, which means that it, it is quite a concentrated ecosystem that makes them exposed to observation and tampering by uh, one network. Um, before I conclude, I have to mention that we are aware of the bias and incompleteness of publicly available BGP data in terms of placement of vantage points, both in terms of ASS and in terms of countries. Um, and we know that backup links and less referred links 
are not always present in the data that we have visibility over. Um, and we have factors and heuristics in our metric to uh, mitigate all of these challenges. In conclusion, we found significant exposure among the 75 countries that we studied. Um, and here are some ideas for applications of CTI. Thank you.